Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It has occurred to me that I've been running this channel for quite some time and yet, except from a few small mansions here and there and a couple of more, let's call them performance videos, I've rarely properly addressed, actually I've never properly addressed, the wild donkey in the room. Let's get into it. I am convinced that, you know, somehow, even though we might learn a lot one from the other, in the art of programming synths and understanding synths, there are times your teachers are actually instruments. See, like in the 90s, I got a horrible, somehow, or amazing, you might think, Korg Trinity. You remember that was so that's sort of a big keyboard with almost no knobs, actually just the idea of this master parameter control, which actually taught me nothing about synthesis. It had the S, uh, the MOS expansion, which allowed me to do a bunch of physically modeled sounds. Probably that's where I got the passion for those. But at the same time, it really didn't teach me anything at all about how to program my instruments. Or better yet, how to get those instruments to sound exactly how I wanted. There was a time I was, just like so many others, incredibly relying on presets, like I had no idea I could really take an instrument and program it to make a sound. So what is the point with this long introduction of me almost uh, talking about myself and narcissistically playing my patches? Well, uh, the thing is that the, the instrument you have here in front of you, and specifically this is Zebra HZ, not exactly the synth I've been learning to program on, I think has been the most important instrument in teaching me how to program synths. There were others, I basically, I don't know, learned uh, the basics on analysis ion, then I got myself a virus, but this was the instrument that really, really opened uh, the doors of, I'd say, the doors of understanding for me. One of the things which you might see here, for example, is this, uh, this knob underneath the attack of the envelopes. See, this knob tells me how, how the single segments of the envelope are scaled by the envelope, so are scaled, sorry, by velocity. So if I play soft, I have this envelope that opens up slowly, and if I play hard, I have something almost plucky, which is, you know, something which I've been talking quite a lot in uh, other videos, haven't I? And this is just to make an example. The idea of using properly comb filters came, I mean, the, the, the way I learned to do them, I wouldn't say I know how to use them properly. I mean, I know to use them somehow functionally for my taste and my needs. I believe so, at least. But uh, the, the thing is, I learned to use those here. The synths made them so intuitive and understandable and allowed me to put them as a, an important piece in my whole sound design process. And even though it is, you know, theoretically a massive wireless modular, you don't really need to use a gazillion amount of uh, components to get something interesting out of it. This uh, could almost have been a zebra patch, yeah, apart from the effects or so. It's very, very simple, and yet... I suppose you, you quite get there, there is some, there is a bunch of things going on here. So how does this synth work? Well, if I had to teach you how to program Zebra, it would take forever. It isn't really an, an easy instrument to tame, as, uh, you know, the... African wild donkey that whose name it carries, it isn't an easy beast to tame. It does take some time, it does take some effort, but I can tell you it really does kind of pay off. Also, as you might have noticed, here, I mean, look at this patch. I mean, there is two oscillator, a sideband modulator, an FM oscillator, another oscillator, no, that's that, three oscillators, sorry, a cross modulation filter, then two more filters, and a comb filter. Then after that, there is uh, two reverbs for to one in the insert and one in the, in the in a return channel, and there is also a phaser and a delay. And yet, I'm here on my 
uh, what is that? Is uh, 2013 uh, i7 uh, Intel Haswell processor. It's you know, quite old. You see, it's a 10 year old PC. This has no multi core support, and yet I can afford making these massive cords with this huge patch. And you know, I'm running like an ASIO buffer of uh, 256 samples, uh, and I'm also running, uh, you know, a compressor. Uh, yes, sir, some reverb on my voice. Uh, there's quite a lot of stuff going on. Not, not that much stuff, really. My vocal chain, as you can tell, isn't that, that complicated. But uh, you see, I'm playing a massive modular synth and talking to you and this, uh, and it doesn't break sweat. It's amazing, isn't it? Yet I might hear some say, yeah, but it's old, very old. This is almost an ancient piece of software. Zebra 2 was out over a decade ago, and yes, it had plenty of updates, changes, but would it be worth... Why would it be worth any money at it now, if you don't have it? I mean, it would seem like a nonsense. I mean, I haven't explicitly been telling you not to get Serum if you don't have it already in the last video, so why should I here be suggesting you should take into consideration the idea of getting into Zebra? Well, the reason is mostly in uh, precisely what I started this video talking about. The learning process. See, uh, a few things are in my book more precious in letting you understand how to program a synth than, you know, properly programmed patches you like and you want to understand. And uh, even though Zebra at the time had, I wouldn't say quite a hefty price tag, but you know, a normal price tag, now since it's, well, it's, I wouldn't say it's dead, but basically it's, uh, and it's not even actually abandonware, it's just, you know, an old synth. They released this legacy version, which basically means you get uh, the, the original synth and these thing here, which is the AX, uh, AX, HZ edition, sorry, which is dedicated to Hans Zimmer. This has uh, double the mod matrix and uh, the filters from Diva. I mean, I don't know, maybe you knew, maybe I'm telling you nothing new, but, but this is huge. I mean, this allows this synth to have uh, this massive modular machine allows you to put into its chain some of the filters from Diva, which include, you know, some of the most amazingly accurate and well-sounding uh, analog emulations, which is, which is quite a lot. And, uh, you know, you're not bound to have them run in Diva. You have this incredibly complex modulation routings. You have uh, four lanes of synthesis. Uh, you can, you can, you can really, you, you know, really, and the amount of components you can put in every single place is huge. And then there is this effects section, which with two sends and returns. I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff in one synth, which now, well, I don't remember how much Zebra Legacy costs. It's something, I believe it's like below 100 euros, something like that, below 90 probably. I didn't even bother checking before making this video. Yeah, because I didn't buy Zebra Legacy, you know, I had the, the original Zebra, so I get, I, now I got everything. Like everyone who does have Zebra now gets all this stuff. Uh, yeah, what is all this stuff? I haven't been talking about it. Yeah, it's the fact that now with this come all the banks, including those that were originally, you know, highly, highly expensive extra packs, including an immense amount of stuff from Howard Scar, some of the patches from him and Hans Zimmer from some movies. There's a lot of sounds from Batman and other stuff like that. That was the reason why it was called the Dark Zebra, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's that. that that's a lot of stuff. For those who have been following my channel for a bit, you might remember I made a couple of videos about making strings with Vital. And you see that whole thing, that old technique, including uh, the comb as uh, adding uh, some added realism. Well, this is the patch I got it from, where I learned it. This patch, I don't know if it was uh, Hans Zimmer or Howard Scar. I mean, who cares? It's amazing. So, since I am apparently so in love with the synth, I think it's so great uh, and uh, I am apparently so good at programming it, you might wonder, 
why am I not making videos about this synth? Well, there is actually a kind of a good reason. And the reason is that uh, UE has an amazing YouTube channel full of uh, tutorials for how to program this synth. I actually learned a lot from those tutorials too, so... Since, since I, I don't know, it's really... The, the internet is big and redundancy isn't that much of a... Of, a, of an issue, but I try my best to make my content as less redundant that it can be, and so there's really very little. I mean, no, there is quite a lot I could tell you beyond those videos, but I'd really have to get some effort into getting something that you can could not get from there and understand how to program this in properly. So, yep, this is it. That is my reasoning. The reason why I don't talk about Zebra that much. And somehow, now that Zebra Legacy has been there for quite some time, I have to say, they call it like they want. But I see, for me, the legacy of this synth will, well, live long. Whether I keep using it or not, or just, I don't know, wait impatiently for the arrival of zebra tree which really has been the piece of software i've been waiting forever for but what i learned programming this and making sounds from it what it gave me in production possibilities in how much of this i've put into my music well i think for me the legacy of this will, will last forever so I finally made this video to address this striped wild donkey in the room and I thought I really had to since, well, for all the reasons I've been explaining into this video, I'm I would be really surprising you're watching the conclusion without watching the video. Well, yeah, you could, but yeah, I'm not gonna repeat it. There, there's a lot of reasons why this synth is great, why it was definitely, I think, worth my time making this video and I hope it was worth yours watching it. And yep, this said, I think I've said everything, you know, there's those, those my usual links in the description to check out if you want to anything more about my music, uh, my patches and uh, whatnot. And yes, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing it and leave me a like. Uh, and if you have anything to say, compliments, insults, questions, uh, requests for further videos, whatever just there's there's a comment section below or even just you know the algorithm loves comments apparently and so i so do i at this point since they do you know the friend of my friend or the enemy of my enemy what was it anyway thank you very much for your time and attention see you at my next video bye